Hello and welcome. In this video, we'll cover the artificial intelligence functionalities in Power BI. Let's move ahead. Alright, so we'll start with an overview and then we'll go take a deep dive into every one of the features afterwards. So let's look at the AI capabilities within Power BI. We'll have um, a segmentation here based on location, feature, explanation and plan. So the first location, let's say, where you can find um, AI insights or AI capabilities is in Power Query. So either the web or the desktop. And I have to say here in web, it's often through data flows. Now, the features are sentiment analysis, key phrase extraction, language detection and image tagging. So what are these? Well, sentiment analysis might speak for itself. So it's um, analyzing a text document and returning a score from one to zero, one being a positive uh, sentiment, zero being a negative sentiment. Key phrase extraction, when you have a large document and you want to find out which documents keep on returning or which sentences keep on uh, returning, you can use that functionality. Also language detection. So if you want to detect what language is being used in the document, you can use that. Image tagging. So tagging images with words. Let's say you have a picture with a house and a background and some grass. It will recognize key words and return it. So this can be useful, for example, in an e-commerce um, context where the owner of the website wants to have labels to the items or to the pictures that are being added to the site and then afterwards users can search on these labels. A second location where you can find AI capabilities is the analytics pane. So in the analytics pane you have a feature called anomaly detection. Anomaly detection is a feature that is used to identify unexpected events or rare items in the data. So you can call them outliers, trend changes, um, certain things that are basically not in line with the rest of your data. All right, so we have AI capabilities in Power Query and the analytics pane, but we also have AI powered visuals. So this can be found, of course, in the visual pane. You have the smart narrative visual, Q&A visual, decomposition composition tree, key influence visualization. Explanation. Well, the smart narrative visual is, um, yeah, it returns a textual representation, a summary, basically, of what the data is uh, supposed to be telling you. And you can also perform some modifications to what you actually want to extract from the data and it's a really cool feature. Then you also have the Q&A visual, I think most of you know this, so this lets you um, answer um, or ask certain questions um, in Power BI regarding a certain visual and then um, if you're a designer you can even specify what kind of visual you want and then Power BI will create it for you. So all using just natural words like I would be talking to a human. Then the decomposition tree is shown on the right because we don't go into detail uh, on this one. So it's basically showing that um, yeah, when there are multiple levels to a data, um, allowing Power BI to show this uh, relationship visually and show this hierarchy or this hierarchy uh, visually. It's useful, for example, in a business context um, when you're doing your accounting and you want to go from, let's say, revenue to all the way to EBITDA and then to net profit, then um, a decomposition tree is really useful. A final uh, AI capability is the key influencers visualization. So this helps you understand the factors that drive a metric that you're interested in. So. It analyzes the data and it ranks the factor that factors that matter most using regression analysis. Now, if there are any other AI visuals that you can think of, be sure to let me know in the comments below. 
All right, so let's do a quick deep dive into um, the different AI capabilities so you understand them better and I will also illustrate them with an example. All right, so sentiment analysis. So as I said before, this function will evaluate uh, a text input and it will return uh, for every row a sentiment from one to zero. What is the application? Well, it's useful for detecting positive and negative sentiment in social media, customer reviews, discussion forms, and so on. And it's also very useful to find out what people think about your brand or a certain topic, a certain politician, and so on. So you can imagine the likely users are marketing departments, public organizations, PR, and also customer service representatives. All right, then the underlying models and technique. So a lot of these AI capabilities use NLP, so natural language processing. It's a field of AI. And then specifically for this one, it's aspect-based sentiment analysis. Um, most of the functions also have an API underlying by um, Microsoft. That's part of the Azure Cognitive Services offering. It is a requirement to have a premium license to use this function, but you can try it out for free uh, for 60 days when signing up. Challenges, of course, uh, these are also specific to NLP in general. So domain knowledge is required. Um, yeah, if you were aggressive in a Twitter comment, it might not mean the same in a football context. Um, also emoticons, they contain a lot of information, but they won't be captured by most sentiment analysis techniques. And then finally, irony and sarcasm. It's really hard for a, a computer, for a, for a program, to basically understand that there's irony or sarcasm involved. All right, let's make this a bit more concrete with an example. All right, so the example that we're looking at is um, this file. So it's an Excel sheet with um, all kinds of uh, reviews. So it's reviews on a given movie. And um, you can see that the file is quite extensive. Eh? Um, it has a lot of rows. So if we had to do this manually, analyze reviews, it would take us quite some time. So I've loaded this file into Power BI. And then in Power Query, so I clicked on uh, Transform. Um, and in Power Query, I pressed the AI Insights. I went to Text Analytics. And then I, um, yeah, this, this always takes some time to load. Um, but then basically, you're, you're given the same option here, Text Analytics. And then um, what is it? So you have Language Detection. You have Sentiment Analysis. And you have... Um, key phrase extraction. So these will pop up here. Yeah, voila. Now they are here. Uh, and then you score your sentiment and then it will ask for where is my text located that I have to analyze. But in this case, it's not in, um, it's not dropped here. No, I've specif specified it in the column movie review. So additionally, you could also indicate a language here. But um, when it's left by default, uh, Microsoft will try to uh, identify the language itself, so we'll just leave it blank for now. When we click OK here, it will, um, yeah, I'll click on Cancel now because I've already done it. But what it will do is, we don't need these columns. Oh. Um, let's remove them. So what it will do is well, it will return a sentiment score. Uh, so let's keep one because it's also very handy if you have an index here. Um, so let's add an index. So what is this? This is uh, the sentiment that's being returned uh, on that review. So zero indicating a negative sentiment, one indicating a positive sentiment. Um, so yeah, uh, with this data, you can imagine you can do a lot of interesting things. You can track uh, those that data over time you can put a, a KPI on it so yeah very interesting also think about it in the context of maybe um, Twitter reviews uh, restaurant reviews Airbnb reviews and so on so very interesting I won't go to the report section because that will take us too far 
but uh, I think that uh, this example makes clear what this AI capability does. All right, let's move on to the next segment. Key phrase extraction also in the Power Query. It uh, returns key phrases from an unstructured text, and for each text field, it inputs. Uh, sorry, it returns a list of key phrases. Um, so yeah, it's of course useful when you have very large documents and you want to save time in maybe retrieving the context uh, from an article, social media feeds, survey results. Um, and due to the size, it makes sense to automate this. So this can be done in Power BI. Likely users are listed here. I won't go over these in detail. Um, underlying technology, well, again, NLP. Um, it's interesting to note here that the industry lead in the natural language processing field is the model GTP3. So it's a 175 billion parameter NLP model. Um, so yeah, very, very strong models in all kinds of areas in translation, in coding, for example, if uh, yeah, I've, I've seen a, a use case where there's just someone, a programmer, let's say, I want a website with a certain field and a dot in that color, and then GDP3 will just return the code for that website. So yeah, it's pretty amazing. Um, it's also interesting to note that Microsoft has an exclusive license since September 2020. Um, GTP3 is built by the team of OpenAI, uh, used to be um, yeah, an, a non-profit organization, but then they switched over to uh, a for-profit or a commercial uh, organization. Um, and now Microsoft has the exclusive license on its use. But it does allow some startups to use the technology, but it's a uh, yeah, it's a process that's ongoing because it's also yeah, it has so much potential. So they really want to watch closely who gets access to the GDP3 API. Um, premium license as well here, and then the challenges uh, are the same as the, the previous one. So sentiment analysis also had the problem where there's domain and conceptual knowledge required, emoticons, and also irony. So an example here on the right, um, you input a document or just a sentence um, and then the algorithm returns key phrases or key words um, from the text. So in this case, it's spectacular views, trail and area. All right, let's move on. The following AI capability is language detection. So language detection, it speaks for itself, uh, automatically detects the language, language for a piece of text. Now, this can be hand, handy for content handlers or internet services academics when they have like this, uh, yeah, maybe a historic document and they want to find out, okay, I want to translate this, but I first need to know what kind of language uh, we're talking about here. So again, here we use NLP um, and it also requires a premium license um, it's, it is important to note here that not all languages can be detected and that the exact list of languages for this feature isn't published. You can also help the algorithm, algorithm uh, when you specify uh, it's in a, it has a parameter called country hint and if you specify the region where the language is being spoken or, when, or where the document is likely coming from um, then you're basically giving a hint to the algorithm. It will also return a confidence score and then also the ISO uh, code. So in this case, ES is for España or Español rather, uh, which uh, is Spanish. And then um, the confidence score indicates how sure uh, or certain uh, the algorithm is in, in specifying the result. All right, let's move on to the next one. All right, another important feature within the AI capabilities of Power BI is image tagging. So image tagging, what is it? It's basically adding a label or 
putting a label on a picture and returning words like person, cat, house. So identifying what is basically um, being shown on the picture. Yeah. And Power BI will help you do that. It will return labels. Um, I think there's about 2000 labels within its library. Um, and these texts can be quite obvious. But in some cases, they're also a bit ambiguous. And in that case, um, Microsoft will also give you hints to clarify the meaning of the tag or label. Output is not only available in English, but also in Spanish, Spanish, Japanese, Portuguese and simplified Chinese. Now, likely users for this capability is, uh, I've mentioned it before, so e-commerce. Um, deciding basically what content, what pictures get shown on your site, also from a security aspect, um, and then also internet services, for example, a content manager. Underlying techniques in this case, well, it belongs to the AI umbrella of um, under computer vision. So computer vision is another um, yeah, AI field, let's say, apart from NLP. Um, and models are mostly classification of all algorithms, often with multiple layers of deep learning. The requirements for using this capability is again a premium capacity and also a sufficiently high resolution of the pictures that are uploaded to Power BI. The challenges for this um, capability is that the labels are limited in number, as I said, uh, around 2000. And there's also not a list of all the different tags or labels available. So that's something that uh, they might hopefully look at uh, in the future. And then also not all languages are supported. Now, can you think of any other likely users from an image tagging perspective in Power BI? Be sure to let me know in the comments below. Now in the analytics pane, there's another, another very cool feature of Power BI, it's called anomaly detection. So anomaly detection will, as I said before, return an outlier uh, in the data. So things that are not supposed to be um, in your data, maybe it's an unusual event, maybe it's a trend change. So you can imagine this being useful in a lot of industries and sectors. <coughs> Now, how is it set up? Well, it will detect data points based on the boundaries that you set and they're called a sensitivity level. So standards, it's around 70%. You can increase it um, to make it basically easier to detect outliers or you can decrease it um, so that there will be a lower number of outliers um, in your data. Um, so you can also provide um, explanatory variables, so things that might explain the outlier. And then when you click or when you or an end user clicks on that data point that is being marked as an outlier, it will try to give you an explanation on why it might be an outlier. So that's shown on the right here as well. So it shows all kinds of explanations to a certain data point. For example, it might relate to the customer segment or the promotional code. Maybe it's a repeat customer or not, a loyalty card or not. So yeah, it's, um, don't take this as let's say hard value because there's also a strength indicator um, indicating yeah, the confidence that, that Power BI has in this factor explaining the, the outlier, the anomaly point. Um, so keep that in mind. Likely users, the banking and insurance industry are, of course, in, in, yeah, very interested in outliers, maybe fraudulent transactions as well. The same goes for retail and e-commerce, cybersecurity, marketing, and so on. Underlying models and techniques. Well, in 2019, Microsoft actually published a paper on the models uh, underlying this feature, and they came up with great results. So it was a combination of two models, an outlier detection model called spectral residual, combining this with an, uh, a very uh, 
um, extensive algorithm, let's say, uh, convolutional neural network. And uh, again, it achieved great results and it's being used um, to allow this anomaly detection to work. The requirements? Well, the axis requires a date time value or a date hierarchy. So this is quite important. And then also data with strong trends will be harder to evaluate. So maybe you can try to detrend um, that, that data over time. The challenges, well, the implications of setting the sensitivity level should be known. Uh, what is an outlier and what not? Yeah, it's based on your sensitivity level. So how high or low are you um, putting it here? And what's basically the impact on the underlying calculation? That's something that you have to keep in mind. And then also, depending on your Power BI version, you might encounter some limitations. Yeah. Um, I've experienced them myself, and usually it was it, it was I was able to resolve them by uh, using the anomaly detection in Power BI Service and not in Power BI Desktop. All right, so let's go over to a quick example. All right, so I've opened Power BI Service, and I have this report over here. And I want to show you a couple of things. So maybe we'll close this first. This one. No, it will not allow me to. Ah, yeah, I have to be in edit mode. So let's remove this for now. Let's also remove this. Because I want to show you the anomaly detection feature. So we have the sales across time. Then we go to the analytics pane and we can add an anomaly detector here. So let's do that and let's make it quite sensitive or at least, um, sorry, not sensitive at all. And so um, the higher the number that you set here, the higher the sensitivity will be. If I select 90 here, it will select a lot of results as outliers. I'll show it to you. See, so let's focus on the, yeah, the outliers that are really present in our data okay we can see a lot of them and then we can start trying to explain the what causes this uh, outlier so in this case power bi says yeah customer segment is adventure that might be the cause for the sale uh, peaking at, at that specific date another example with a somewhat lower confidence score or strength it's called here is a promotion code which was yes so a lot of people use promotion code uh, on that date and uh, yeah you can continue your analysis based on the, the things that you find i hope that illustrates it a bit more but make sure to try it out on your own reports the q a visual is of course another interesting um, AI capability. So what allows it, it allows you to do is basically ask questions uh, about the data and there can even be questions like uh, featured so listed in advance and then you can choose what's relevant for you. Um, but this is really a, a game changer in the uh, visualization space um, because it's it's not necessary anymore to have some data analysis background to get the most relevant insights out of your data. You can just type it what you want to, to get to, to see uh, as an answer from your data. Now, it's also interesting for report designers because they can specify the way the data should be shown. And then the Q&A visual will create that visual for them. Users are, yeah, broadly speaking sales finance hr departments marketing teams but basically anyone that's using power bi um, underlying models is also again nlp the requirements well the model needs to be set up in the right way you might encounter some different difficulties um, for example when columns have the same names than tables or when they're not sorted when there isn't a relationship between the tables so yeah that's um, something that you have to keep in mind and then also creating feature questions in power bi service requires edit permissions to the data set 
A challenge regarding Q&A visual is that not all data sources are supported and QA tooling has some limitations. So QA tooling, we'll look at that in a second. So that's reviewing questions that people have asked and maybe including it as a feature question or basically training the algorithm so it's able to answer your question. Let's teach Q&A. So on the right, you can see a quick example, but let's actually look at this a wee bit more uh, into detail. Okay, so we're back to our reports in Power BI web. Let's make this a bit smaller and also remove the anomaly pane. So there we go. And let's say we want to ask some questions about this data and we'll use the Q&A visual for that. All right, so immediately there's a, a couple of suggestions that Power BI provides for us, things that might be interested based on the data. So let's have a look. Cancellations and average revenue per transaction by city. Yeah, that's quite interesting. Maybe we should um, pay a, a bit closer attention to people coming from Lightford. Um, so yeah, immediately a lot of interesting stuff is being shown. So let's try another one. Average purchase size by customer segments. Okay, so the adventurer um, purchases a bit more than the other uh, types. So that's also interesting. So you can see how how yeah important and how much value you can derive from the Q and A feature. Now, if you think like this report is quite interesting, I want to keep it in my analysis. Then you can click on this button right here, and then it will just return. Um, or become a regular visual. You can also set up feature questions in the Q&A uh, pane when you go to settings and then settings again. We'll save this. And the feature sessions, uh, sorry, feature questions, they allow you to basically uh, write a question for your users um, if you think it's relevant for them to see or maybe you want to to have them their attention focused on a couple of things and you can add those questions here and uh, it will be saved for that data set do note that you need edit permissions for the data set so be aware of that all right i hope that makes it a bit more clear let's move on to the next one All right, the smart narrative visual is of course listed in the visuals pane. Um, so the smart narrative allows you to have the key takeaways and extract the key insights from a visual. And Power BI will show this in um, a textual form. So it will basically write a summary about your visual. And this will, of course, it's very interesting if you have very complex visuals and end users need to be able to draw quickly uh, the most relevant insights. In that case, you can use a smart narrative visual. Um, in other cases, you want to focus your attention on specific items focused in the data, and then you can customize the smart narrative visual to your needs. But we'll also look at this using an example. Likely users are sales, finance, HR department again, so yeah, any Power BI user. Um, the exact model is quite unsure, so I think it leverages the Q&A feature a bit and it's quite similar to the underlying models of, of that feature. The requirements, um, yeah, well, if you want to create a template for the summary, you have to manually uh, set it up, but that's a small requirement. And then the challenge um, is that it doesn't support all lists um, or all functionalities. For example, you can't publish um, a smart narrative visual to the web. You can't um, pin it to a dashboard. Um, yeah, there's a, a couple of limitations that you have to keep in mind. But again, let's not talk about it too much. Let's show it uh, in, its, in an example so we can make it a bit more concrete. All right, so we're back in Power BI web service. And let's look at what the smart narrative looks like in practice. Yep, there we go. It's quite fast. 
So um, yeah, it immediately gives us some insights about the most relevant data points. Um, it focuses on the the later dates because for an end user this will likely be relevant. And then it also says like okay, it started to trend down uh, at the end of December, but then it jumped again. Um, oh yeah, there was a period of let's say expansion from November to July 2019. So yeah, a lot of interesting uh, things that we can highlight here. And we can also add certain values. So we can add dynamic values that update with your data. For example, um, let's say um, sales of uh, December. Save. Okay, so it click cancelled here. Um, there we go. So you see that uh, you can set the value the way you want it. Uh, so here you might be able to type um, my sales. Oh, sorry my sales in December and then yeah normally we would add a year where that amount and then you can also add um, in units so you can make this as custom as you want um, a very interesting feature the smart narrative I highly recommend you try it out for yourself and I hope that this, this example made it a, a bit more clearer already all right let's move on All right, finally, so the Azure ML model. So I've mentioned this, um, yeah, I didn't mention it in the beginning, but I, I did want to uh, include it um, to, let's say, be more complete when the, discussing the AI capabilities in Power BI. So the Azure ML model allows you to create or train a model um, on your own. And then you can register it and you can create dependencies and use that model well power bi also allows you to um, basically use that model um, in the power query editor and then use it as a step uh, in power query uh, functions so yeah if you have created your own ml model um, know that you can also use it within power bi and, and upload it there all right All right, so let's do a quick recap what we discussed. So we um, discussed Power Query, Analytics Pane, and the Visual Pane, the different AI capabilities that we saw are listed uh, in here. Sentiment analysis allows you to return a sentiment based on textual information. Language detection detects uh, what kind of language is being used. Key phrase extraction it extracts the, the key concepts of your data. Image tagging returns labels for your images. Anomaly detection returns outliers to your visual. <clears throat> and then the visuals that have AI capabilities are the smart narrative visual, Q&A visual, decomposition tree, and the key influencers visualization. All right, so that was it for this course, this quick recap of all the AI capabilities. Now, know that we also created another video on the DA100 exam. Uh, so that's a Microsoft certifi certificate that showcase your abilities in Power BI. Um, it's valid for one year and the video will take you about two hours to complete. Best of luck and see you in the next video where we will discuss embedded Power BI.